Hello, everybody. It's me, Bigfoot, Michigan Rob, a.k.a. BMR. You know what day it is. It's Friday, and it's time for another encounter story from a subscriber or an emailer. In this case, it's from an emailer. Before I get into that, I want to thank, take the time and thank all of you for subscribing, for sharing me out, for supporting me. For those of you that participate and give super chats during our live shows, awesome. Thank you. The super thanks for these videos. Thank you. And um, I just really wanted to tell you guys that I am appreciative of everybody tuning in almost every day. We have something going on every day on our channels. Bigfoot, Michigan Robin, of course, shout out to Texas Front Porch, the team that I'm a part of over there. This story, you guys, it's about allegedly not one but two dogmen attack a Pennsylvania home. There's a good backstory to this, a little bit of history. And when I read this, I'm like, once again, I'm off my rails on this. I think you're going to enjoy it. It's frankly insane. Insane. I hope you guys have a great weekend and I hope we get started with this. Rob, my name is Steve. And to start this terrifying nightmare, I first need to give you some background information of a tale told to me by my now late grandfather, Stanley. I use the term loosely as my father, Stan Jr., has told me this story well before grandfather did. But my dad was only five years old when this all started. My dad only remembers fragments of these events terrifying events so my grandpa stanley had to fill in the blanks where my dad had forgotten here is the story williams penn state forest pennsylvania 1967 grandpa stanley which he preferred to be called was in his mid-30s and my dad stan jr was five in 1967 grandpa had over 40 acres of property outside of Williams Penn State Forest, which is now what it's called today. I don't know what it was called back in 1967. He had a very spacious cabin deep in the woods where my dad spent his early youth fishing with his father, again, my Grandpa Stanley. On my 16th birthday, Grandpa purchased me an older Ford pickup truck. I was so excited and exuberant at this and gleaned from ear to ear. Then Grandpa... He put a finger to his lips and said, Steve, take this truck wherever you like, but never take it to the cabin. I replied, but why, Grandpa? Keep in mind, as I mentioned, my dad told me first of this story, but it was only fragmented and pieced together. So Grandpa Stanley went about what happened out at the cabin in 1967. Grandpa states, Steve, your father and I, when he was five, went fishing off a river bank that ran across the property. It was early morning and not a fish could be caught, not even a nibble. Grandpa recalled that there was not even a sound to be heard in the forest that morning, which was strange. And Grandpa felt something was not quite right. So he told my dad, let's pull in our gear and head back to the cabin. Before they could reel in their rods... All of a sudden, Grandpa and my dad were surrounded by a pack of wolves. Grandpa Stanley, Grandpa Stanley explains, They were not ordinary wolves. They were huge, black, and had the deepest red eyes. And they glared directly at my grandpa and my dad. They were on all fours. They seemed to be at least four feet high, with unusually large heads to match the demonic glowing eyes. Grandpa had guessed there were at least six or seven of these beasts. According to my grandpa, my dad started to cry, of which I may add, my dad does remember the wolves, and my dad does remember the red eyes, the best of his recollection back in 1967. Frightened, Grandpa turned to Dad and said, Son, be still and don't move. Grandpa said at least 10 minutes went by before the pack of wolves turned back into the forest. They all left except for one. This beast on all four legs rose to two legs and stared directly into my grandpa's eyes with the menacing, menacing glow of the red. 
the wolf-like creature even appeared to smile, a very perverse smile, sinister. It was not friendly at all. My grandpa recalls it was a statement. This creature was making a statement to him. And he had figured that the statement was this, I can kill you whenever I want, just by that menacing look. The creature then ran on his two legs, dropping to all fours, vanished into the woods. This was in 1967. We now fast forward to the summer of 2012. My dad, now 50 and I 24, received the news that Grandpa Stanley had passed. In Grandpa's will, my father received the property out at Williams State Forest a place that we had not been back to or visited in over a decade. I never liked the place. I always felt uneasy, as well as my dad and my mom, Peggy. We just had no interest. I do believe my dad was always scared of the property, especially since the day being surrounded by the wolves. My mom never really felt at ease around Grandpa Stanley. In fact, she just did not like him, and found him to be somewhat untrustworthy. Mom and Dad often fought about Mom's disdain for her father-in-law. But like most married couples, Dad took Mom's side, which always caused tension, especially around the holidays. It was an early morning in the fall when myself, Dad, and Mom rode out to the family inheritance. We were all reluctant, but wanted to inspect the cabin and spend the weekend to decide if we wanted to keep the property in the family or put it up for sale. I must tell you, Rob, the property, the property alone is magnificent. Over 40 acres of prime real estate with running streams and an abundance of wildlife and fauna, a perfect home for a nature lover, a hunter, or somebody that just wants to get away from the everyday hustle and bustle of everyday life. Certainly, it would fetch a pretty penny on the open market. The first night drew near, and we would find our we would find out that our lives would be turned upside down. Loud, insidious howls rang from the eastern side of the property. The howls drew nearer. They got closer, and they gained in crescendo. Now, huddled in the cabin, we hear something running outside the cabin. The footfall was heavy, unlike the footfall of any animal. Whatever this was, it was big. My dad rose to look out of the living room window and saw those glowing red eyes not 50 feet from the cabin. Those same red eyes he recalls as a five-year-old in 1967. Dad gestured to Mom and I to come to look out the window. There it stood, a werewolf, a werewolf-looking creature at least, seven foot tall, had to be, big black head. Again, those peering, almost penetrating eyes felt like it pierced my inner soul. Then it dropped on all fours and started to run around the house. We lost sight of the monster when all of a sudden, on the opposite side of the living room, I guess you would call it the family room, scratching sounds like thick nails began to scrape along the outside of the house. We all ran to the window in this particular room and saw what at first was to be the same creature when suddenly back in the living room side of the house the scraping and clawing started up on that side so now there's two of these one on opposite sides of the house and they're scraping scratching gnashing against this house we are frantic mom is starting to cry my father was pale as a ghost and i well i'm in shock I think, am I dreaming? Is this really happening? Yet, I know, this is no dream, not one whatsoever. This went on all night long just before sunrise. We were thankful that these creatures did not try and get into the cabin. The night was paralyzing. 
After we knew these were werewolves or whatever they were, when they had left, they were gone out of sight, we went outside and inspected the outside of the house. Deep grooves, gouges, and claw marks were left all around the cabin. Reality set in. This happened. It was all too real. Mom said to Dad that she all along could not help but think that old Grandpa Stanley had something to do with this. My dad lost it and called my mom insane. They got in a fight. They argued feverishly and to the point where I, being a grown man, started to cry and told them to please stop. I yelled out, Mom and Dad, we were terrorized by what? I don't know. Grandpa is dead, Mom. And Dad, stop blaming Mom for not liking or trusting Grandpa all these years. Let's face it, he was always a strange guy, and I always felt Grandpa was kind of creepy. So let's just get past this. Grandpa's dead. We've got to make a decision. We're alive. Eventually, Dad and Mom both laughed at me at this point, and finally, we all did kind of calm down and pulled ourselves together. Then, when we did a final walk about the cabin, we came upon the back side of the house on the outer wood porch. We took note of the same gouging and claw marks on the floorboards. However, unlike the other random scrapes and gouges, there appeared to be words almost etched on the bottom of the deck. What we make out of these words read, Get out, Grandpa. He goes on in the email to say that they have since sold the cabin. Now, he went on to tell me in the email he has no idea. You know, was this was this Grandpa? Was Grandpa really an evil guy? Was Grandpa a shapeshifter? Was, was Grandpa a werewolf? I mean, what was this? Were these dogmen paranormal entities? Did they, did they prey on the minds and the hearts of this family, getting a property they didn't want? Right? I mean, they were reluctant to go. They were reluctant to go there. I think every intention for them was to sell this place. Was that Grandpa? Did he have some communication with these creatures? Was that a warning? Maybe we're reading this all wrong. Maybe Grandpa was telling them a warning just to get out and sell the place. Or maybe Grandpa, maybe, just maybe, Grandpa came back as a dog man. I don't know. A lot to think about. Please leave a comment what you thought about this video, this story. I thought it was cool. Thank you for everybody for subscribing to Bigfoot Michigan Rob on YouTube. If not already, for those of you first-timers, please subscribe. The super thanks for all videos is open if you care to donate. But more than anything, I appreciate you subscribing and sharing me out. You have a fantastic weekend. It's 83 degrees out here. I'm gung-ho to get some gardening done, get some lawn work done. I hope you have a great weekend because I'll be shoveling snow on Sunday. No, check that, Monday. BMR. I'm out. Love you all. Thank you.